There are 43 tadpoles in Baldur's Gate 3, and I spent five days locating them all, so you don't have to. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Joe Usual, and without further ado, here are the locations of the 43 tadpoles in Baldur's Gate 3 and how to get them. Number one, the very first tadpole you're going to get is the easiest. You're going to go to the Druid Grove, go to the Druid's Chambers, and then go into the Enclave Library and speak with Nettie. After your interaction with her, you're going to go ahead and find the tadpole location at the stone table next to the drow's body. Just make sure you crouch so that she doesn't see you, and you can go just pick it up from there. Number two, west of the Druid Grove in the forest, you're going to find three people. You're going to find a dwarf that's dying and two other acolytes. Once the dwarf has passed away, you can go ahead and interact with his body and the voice inside of your head will tell you why let its memories go to waste the tadpole has absorbed it all Ex experience could nourish you choose the first option let your body guide you welcome the tadpole's influence and then it should show you in the middle of your screen that you got a tadpole specimen number three once you've reached the goblin stronghold at the shattered sanctum talk to true soul gut and ask her to help you she will say go to my chapel i will meet you there she will go into her chapel then have gail or someone else with misty step misty step into the room adjacent to where she's at where you'll find a bunch of uh smoke powder barrels collect all of the smoke powder barrels and all of the fire wine barrels in this entire place because you're going to need this to uh, make your life a lot easier. You don't have to, you can fight your way through this and it's fine, but it's easier if you just gather up all of these barrels and place them strategically for these three goblin bosses. So just place a single barrel next to True Soul Gut and then go ahead and have Gale and all of your party around the corner. Then just go ahead and crouch. One well-placed firebolt and you can go ahead and get rid of True Soul Gut in one fell swoop, and you won't have to worry about it. By the way, uh, to gather these fire wine barrels without having to haul them around, you collect them into your inventory, then go into your inventory, go to that barrel, right click on it, and send to camp, and that will put your the barrels into your chest at your camp. So you can do that with all the loot. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to carry around the loot. It goes directly to the chest that's at your camp. So you never have to carry around too much weight. Number four, at the back of Shattered Sanctum, you're going to find Dror Raglan. Once you have, he has interacted with the Mind Flayer and you've done that interaction, he will sit down at his throne. You can place your fire wine barrels and your smoke powder barrels in strategic locations around his throne and all of his acolytes, and you can get rid of most of them. I haven't been able to get rid of all of them, but you're going to be able to get rid of most of them with a fire bolt. And then but be careful where you place the barrels at his throne because there's a chance that you can blow him into the hole that's next to his throne if you do that you'll lose his mind flare parasite you don't want to do that but that is the uh, fourth parasite you should be able to get in the game number five minthara night warden minthara you can do one of two ways Either you can put barrels around her right there and you can attack her. But either way, with Dror Ragslin or Minthara, if you attack them in the Shattered Sanctum, you will aggro every single goblin in the place. So my suggestion is that you tell her where the location of the grove is so she goes away and she goes to the grove and then go after Dror Ragslin so that you don't have to fight all of the goblins in the entire place and her as well. So you can, unless you split up everybody and then you fire off a firebolt at Dror Ragslin and Minthara at the same time, but then you got to fight your way out, but you're going to have to fight your way out anyway. So um, it's, so it's, it's a six to one half dozen to the other. Do you want to fight Minthara and Dror Ragslin at the same time? Or do you want to send Minthara away to the grove and then betray her at the grove which is what i did and then you can go ahead and you can either like i said once you kill her this will be your fifth mind flare parasite 
So either way, whatever you want to do, six to one half dozen to the other, I highly suggest using fire wine barrels, explosive barrels, oil barrels to uh, to get rid of these bosses. It's the fastest, easiest way to get the third, fourth, and fifth mind flare parasites in the game. Number six. In the northern part of the map on your way to go get Carlac, you're going to come across the uh, Flind Null Warlord. Well, the Null Warlord named Flind. And you're going to be able to get a Mind Flare Parasite from this character. However, you, the easiest way to get rid of this character is to convince them. Once you go through a round of combat, they will talk to you. Your Parasite will be able to convince them to attack their own people. Um, you'll actually want to have them attack the people in the cave first. And then she will still be hungry. And then you're going to go ahead and tell them that you want them to attack their own people so that they can get something to eat. And then it, that way you can go ahead and get rid of most of that entire fight and only have to fight Flynn at the end. And Flynn should be hurt. So Flynn should be fairly easy to defeat. And once it's all said and done, you can get that Mind Flayer Parasite from Flynn. Number seven. The seventh tadpole is going to be found down in the Underdark at the Grim Forge. And it's going to be True Soul Near. The easiest way to get to him is to go to the Myconid village, talk with the deep gnome who is poisoned, help her. She will give you her boots. Then you go down and either talk to the Dwegar that are down by the water's edge, down on the beach, or you can fight them. Either way, take their boat, go across the water, go to the Grim Forge, then go up the stairs. And then you'll speak with a, another Dwegar who is trying to get through the rubble to get to near. Once you convince the goats to break through the rubble, then go ahead and leave. And then what will happen is near will die automatically. You won't have to fight them. Go into your camp. And then and once you come back from your camp, you'll be at the same location. And then Nier will have died, and then you can go ahead and you can get the Mind Flare Parasite from him directly. It's very easy to do. Uh, it's a very short interaction, so it shouldn't take you long to get this one at all. Numbers 8, 9, and 10. These tadpoles can be found at the Githyanki Crush. Once you finish the Underdark location, fast travel back up and go through the mountain pass on the western part of the map. Once you do, make your way down to the Githyanki Kresh, and once you're inside, find your way to the infirmary. In the laboratory of the infirmary, as you walk in the door, on the left-hand side on a table, there are two tadpoles, and then on the right-hand side, there's a jar with a third one. So you might have to go through uh, Lizelle's storyline, but once you're finished with that little part right there, you can either... Get rid of the Githyanki physician, or you can go ahead and you can just crouch, hide, go into turn-based mode, and just steal those tadpoles from there. Number 11. Once you reach the Shadowlands, go into the Last Light Inn and then speak with Isabel on the top floor. Once you do, you will activate uh, Flaming Fist Marcus fight. And once you fight him and you defeat him, because you have to defeat him, you're going to go ahead and you'll be able to get your Mind Flayer Parasite from him. Numbers 12 and 13. These two tadpoles are found in the bodies of Adepts Merim and Malik. That the, they're at the steps of Moonrise Towers when you first get there. They are flanked by some uh, monsters that are some trash mob. If you fight these two, uh, one of them does have Death Ward on. I think Merim has a Death Ward on her. And uh, so it's kind of a, it might be a tough fight for you depending on your level. But I've also seen that maybe they might die after you free the Night Song. So you might not have to fight them at all. It's worth exploring either way. I usually just kill them, get it over with, take your parasites and move on. Number 14, this tadpole can be found in the kitchen inside of Linzella. Uh, she's the one that is talking with the gnolls and she's dominated the gnolls. You can go ahead and actually sneak up behind her after you have your interaction. You can go ahead and take her out, take out the gnolls. This will thin the ranks for that big battle that you're going to have after you free the night song. 
So you might want to just do take care of her right away. Either way, um, after the big battle, if you don't get rid of her here, you can go ahead and you can collect her tadpole from the uh, from after the big battle. But then you'll have to contend with the, the three gnolls. They are archers and her as well. So I would thin the ranks right here right now so that when you have that big battle after you free the night song, you don't have to worry about that as an issue. Numbers 15 and 16. On the eastern side of Moonrise Towers, there is a dock with a boat, a loading dock where there would be a boat. And there is a container that has two tadpoles in it. You walk up to the acolyte Maris and then convince him to take uh, to allow you to take a look. And then he sees worms all over. He will go running off, then go to the guard that is behind him on the other end of the dock and talk to him and convince that guard to go f after the first guard. And then what I do is I will crouch, I grab the container, and I immediately go to camp. What you'll find is that, and this is a little confusing for some people, is that as soon as you grab that container, you will collect both tadpoles. You can look inside of it if it doesn't work for you, but your counter should go up by two. If it doesn't look in, go when in your camp, drop the container, look inside of the container, and you should be able to collect your two tadpoles from there. Number 17. Once you've gotten the dock tadpoles, go ahead and go upstairs and talk to Zarel. She's the half orc commander. And then once you go to her, she will say she has a mission for you. And she will give you the mission to go talk with Balthazar, where you're also going to find the night song. But once she gives you the mission, give her a little bit of time. She will walk down and around into this library right here, which is next to Balthazar's chambers. And then she will be alone with an ogre. And then you can go ahead and just fight her and the ogre by themselves if you can dispatch them, you also thin the ranks for the for that big battle that is going to be happening after you free the Night Song. And you won't have to deal with her during that big battle. And you can get her tadpole just by uh, isolating her and the ogre at this time. Number 18. Once you've defeated Kethrick at the top of the tower, not the final battle, but the, when at the top of the tower and he retreats, you're going to jump down the hole into the... Mind Flayer Colony, and then you're going to make your way to the Tadpoling Center. It's directly ahead and to the left. Go past the pods. You can either free these people and fight the, the Mind Flayers or not, but go to the Brine Pool and activate the Brine Pool. You're going to have to succeed in a perception check. So if you don't succeed in a perception check, click on your other characters and take them to the Brine Pool and have them try. And if you don't make the perception check on the first try, then I would I would save the game beforehand so that you can go ahead and reload so that you may, so you can try again and try again until you can collect the tadpole. Watch your counter at the top because it, you won't see a tadpole, but it will give you an additional tadpole if you succeed in your perception check and activate the pool. Number 19. This is the oubliette. After your fight with Kethrick and you defeat him, then come back to Moonrise Towers where you had the big battle and then go back into the chamber where you had the big battle and go to the right hand side or the western side of and go through that door. Activate that mesh that's right there and then come back out, go up the ladder and then stick your arm in the hole. And you want to fail the ability checks. You want to fail them so that you can go ahead and get sucked into the wall. And then you will speak with the absolute. And then you will go ahead and you will get sucked into the oubliette. You want this to happen. Then find the body. on the. It will be to the left. And there is a mind flare parasite in that body. Once you find that mind flare parasite, you're going to have to fight your way up to past two hook horrors and then you're going to be able to find your way out from there and that is number 19. 
number 20. Now, the 20th tadpole is going to be at the beginning of Act 3. You're going to leave the Shadowlands, and you're going to go, and you, there will be a lot of cutscenes where you are almost to Baldur's Gate. You are speaking with people, and you are relaxing, and you are going to go to bed. Now, once you go to bed, an astral portal will open up, and you will be attacked. You need to make it through the astral portal. And then you have to go into, you're basically going into the artifact itself. And then you have to go and you have to reach the guardian who is calling for your help. You have to fight past the enemies. And then it is revealed that the guardian is a mind flayer. You have to defeat the honor guard. Once you've defeated the honor guard, you will be given a choice to take uh, the astral tadpole or not. Take the astral tadpole. Do not eat it. Just open your mind to it. If you eat it, then none of the rest of your party can use it. You need to just open your mind to it. And that will allow you to access six of the abilities automatically. Hopefully you have not taken any tadpoles at this time. If you have, then, um, then you've wasted your tadpoles. And so you want to wait until this moment before you start taking tadpoles for yourself. Once you've opened your mind to the tadpole, you're going to be able to convince the rest of your party members to also open the mind, their mind to the tadpole. And then you're going to be able to feed tadpoles to them so that you can make your party a lot stronger than you normally would be able to have. So the astral tadpole is number 20. Number 21. When you get to Rivington, go ahead and go down the road and to the left-hand side like you're going to Baldur's Gate. You will see a couple having a picnic and an abandoned windmill. Go ahead and pick the lock on the door. Then go inside, find the hatch, go down the ladder, and you will find a newly born mind flayer that you can go ahead and dispatch. And it won't have a tadpole per se, but you will be able to eat his brain and consume his uh, tadpole ability, and that'll add to your collection. So that will be number 21. Numbers 22, 23, and 24. Go past the circus, past the monastery. Before you reach the bridge, go left and go down the path. And then what you will do is you will go around the wrecked ships. You're going to bypass all of the traps that are there. There's a fog cloud and there are a bunch of mines and tripwires and you're going to meet an interesting character there. And then once you get across all of that, you're going to go across a bridge and then just wait. There's going to be two groups of people that are going to fight. Let them fight it out. And then whoever wins, wins. And then you take out the rest of them. Make sure that you wait. Otherwise, you'll have to fight both groups and you don't want to do that. Once you've polished off all of the enemies, then on the left-hand side of the rock, on a barrel, you're going to find a tadpole specimen. Collect that one. And then go onto the ship. And then in the storage to the left, you're going to find two more tadpole specimens. Number 25, make your way to the lower city and find sorceress sundries. Go in the door, go to the clerk, and then to the right-hand side as you're looking at the clerk, you're going to find a table, make Gale or someone else go invisible, and then pick up the specimen. Now, you will activate a guard that will see you, but because you take the specimen into your, into your inventory, of the lithid tadpoles and you didn't steal anything else there's nothing to find so you shouldn't be arrested so it should be okay number 26 is at the lodge and that is west of the lower city central wall portal it's going to be northwest of the singing lute just go through the door go up the stairs and to the left and then to the left of that you're going to go through the double doors and then go to the left again and then you're going to go down the hall all the way and you can find the specimen on the table 
to the left hand side right there number 27 so you're going to go to crimson draughts which uh, you'll find a raj of bladra who was at moonrise towers she's the loath sworn drow and she survived the battle and the entire and the entire thing she found her ways to Baldur's gate so if you've actually spoken with her and dealt with her which you should at moonrise towers then she will have an interaction with you that you should enjoy very well and then once you have your interaction with her go and have gail or someone else go invisible and if you succeed on your perception check you will find the key which will lead to the hatch which will lead you down below which will lead you to the door watch out for the traps that are there and then when you open the door directly ahead of you to the left of the spectator who's on the floor on the desk you're going to find your specimen number 28 and 29 you're going to find these two at flim's cobblers which is southwest of sorcerer's sundries these are gortash's parents and they only have about three or four hit points a piece. Uh, they have been locked, uh, their brains have been locked in with the parasites and Gortash is uh, he's torturing them basically. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and you go through the interaction with them. And uh, you know, although they feel like that what they did was right to Gortash, they still uh, need to be dispatched and you're gonna go ahead, they're easy to kill because they only have three or four hit points each one hit a piece and you should be good to go at this point and then you can go ahead and collect both of their mind flare parasites from their heads number 30 this tadpole can be found in bloom ridge park you go and you walk around until you get ambushed by the reapers of ball assassins once you finish this fight well in the middle of the fight some fists will show up one of them by the name of manip and doza um, and so if you don't aggro the fist, they will fight the assassins with you. And then at the end of the fight, Manip uh, will walk up to you and be having a conversation with you. She's actually taken over by the absolute. And at the end of the conversation, no matter what happens, her brain will melt and she will die right there on the spot you can go ahead and you can get into her inventory and collect the specimen but be aware that if you do you will probably have to fight some more fists who think that you're robbing her so that is a thing so if you just take the specimen you might be able to get away with it otherwise you may have a second battle on your hand um, either way this is uh, specimen number 30. number 31 in the basement of the blushing mermaid so what you'll do is this is just south of bloom ridge park so what you'll do is you go in the door go down into the basement through the oak door by the bar and then as you go into the basement on the right hand side you'll want to jump up and you'll want to succeed on a perception check to see past the illusionary wall walk through that then go ahead and get through the door and then as you pass through the door just to the left above you you, if you've already accepted the Mind Flayer Parasites Astral Tadpole, you can fly, just fly directly up to the top and to the left right there is your tadpole specimen. Number 32, and this is the interaction where you try to save Volo. Whether or not um, you had Volo do surgery on you, he will show up here no matter what. Um, I've had surgery done by Volo, and uh, it, then he shows up here anyway in Act 3. So if you ran away from your camp, don't worry about it. You're going to find him here. Churg Evlik is the preacher, and he's the one you're going to want to go ahead and dispatch. Uh, the, but be aware after the fight that if you go to uh, gather the specimen that some of the guards might have an issue with you you may have to talk your way or fight your way out of it so that is specimen number 32 numbers 33 to 38. now after you rescue volo or don't rescue volo but you get churg's specimen you should be able to go to this boat that is right on the docks and it's being guarded by two steel watchers. They will not allow you on the boat. However, if you make Gale or someone else go invisible, you should go into turn-based mode and be able to sneak onto the boat, to the back of the boat, 
and whether or not you succeed or fail on your perception check shouldn't matter. You should be able to click on the appropriate box and it should reveal six tadpoles that you can collect right there and then just sneak off of the boat. And then if so long as you didn't do anything wrong, you should be able to um, come back visible and walk right away. Number 39. This one is a difficult one. I used Gale, who's been transformed, and um, I used all the best equipment. I had the ring of free action. I had a ring of regeneration. I had uh, dexterity gloves. I had the cloak of protection. I had the haste helm. I had the nightwalker boots. Uh, I had everything that would keep me from getting stuck in case somebody cast a spell that was going to keep me from being able to move. I had all the best spells. I had haste. I had a uh, misty step. I also had a, a, a magic item that gave me an additional misty step. I had uh, dimension door. I had gaseous form. I also took a potion that gave me gnomish ingenuity that I got from a bladra in Moonrise Towers. I'm going to make a video on that uh, later on. I also had an arrow transposition that I didn't use, but I could have. Um, and then um, I also had, he's a transmutation wizard in this episode. So I went ahead and I, um, I gave myself extra speed at the end. So I had extra movement speed. I should have done that at the beginning, but I didn't. But I don't know of a stealth way to get through this, uh, this quest right here, or to get this tadpole. Um, you have to get as close as you can before they detect you and then just get the heck out within one round. If you don't, then you got 30 enemies on you and they kill you every time. It took me a dozen times to get this right. So good luck to you. And it's a Steel Watch Foundry. Don't forget, you need to do this and get this tadpole before you do the Steel Watch Foundry quest line. Because if you don't, then um, you, the Steel Watch Foundry will be destroyed and you can't get the tadpole because you can't get back inside. Also, once you aggro these guys, Gortash's Steel Watch will be after you, call you a villain. Villain try to put you in prison. So you either have to go talk to Gortash immediately after this and make amends or, I mean, make a deal with him, or you have to go to prison and break yourself out. So either way, however you want to do it and good luck to you because you're going to need it. Number 40, uh, this is the counting house. And I tried to blow up all the guards and get in that way. Didn't really work that well. So what you'll want to do is you want to bring your whole party to the counting house and then separate Gale out or somebody else who has invisibility Go to the right-hand side. You'll want to go up the stairs, then go to the left, and go to the, the very first door on the left. And then you're going to go into turn-based mode, pick the lock, go through, and then right on the window on the right-hand, next to the window on the right-hand side, there is a bank pass. You're going to want to pick that up. Immediately, fast travel back to your camp, and then fast travel to a portal that is next to the counting house and then rejoin your group. Okay. Get all your group together. And then you'll want to go to the, to the uh, bank vault entrance and look, talk to captain Ferris. Uh, and she'll ask for your bank pass, your vault pass, and you're going to go ahead and give it to her. And then you're going to go ahead and walk down. And then at the junction there, hang a right, go down into those doors, go through those doors, and then go to the right again, show them your bank pass again. And that'll get you into the vault. Now, once you get into the vault, you're going to need to know the code. And this is where you need all four of your characters. You're going to have to put each one of your characters on a tile that's appropriate. Okay, you have um, uh, one, three, and then the middle one, and then the one in the bottom right. So, and you, and it's, it's one, three, four, seven, or whatever it is. So, you have to click those in order. Okay. So it's, yeah, so click the first one, then number three, then the one in the middle, then the one on the bottom right. Click those in order. That will unlock the vault. And you'll be able to, and all these lights will activate. And if you miss, if you miss one or you mess one up, it's fine. You can reset it. Just give it a second. It'll reset itself and you can start over. It's not a big deal. It does take a little bit of practice, especially when you're clicking on your different characters. Um, but uh, it, once you get your vault open, and you're going to walk down. There's going to be an interaction. This is where you're going to see Minsk for the very first time. And you're also going to meet um, uh, Rakith Glitterbeard. And, uh, and there's a whole interaction there. And that starts the Minsk um, quest line. 
uh, where you can get Minsk as a companion, but I'm not going to do that right now. We're talking about the vault that you were looking for here. Um, and so there's going to be a whole fight where there are assassins that are invisible. And if you have not gotten your, um, your C invisibility eye from Volo early on in the game, then you're, this might be a little bit more challenging. You need C invisibility. Or if you are a drow, you should have fairy fire. Or if you have fairy fire, fairy fire is your friend in this fight. Once you finish the fight, then you're going to want to find vault number six. Once you find vault number six, there's probably going to be one more assassin that's left over that's uh, lurking around somewhere. You're probably going to have to fight them as well. Uh, once you And once you dispatch that last assassin that's been hiding amongst uh, the, 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 the shadows, then you this, this is a 30 sleight of hand uh, lock picking skill. So a natural 20 will pop the lock. Obviously anything that's a natural 20 is a critical, critical success. However, I highly suggest you get every last advantage you can get every magic item that can give you any sort of bonus, as well as getting guidance, anything you can do. I sat here for an hour reloading this game because I kept running out of thieves tools until I finally got a natural 20. Um, and I actually had, I actually got a level at this point. I gave, um, one of my paladins, uh, a, a level in cleric just so I could get guidance. It is a difficult, difficult lock pick. Obviously it's a 30. So be aware that you might have to be here for a minute. Um, but you, once you do get into this, uh, this vault, this is Gortash's vault and it has a mind flare specimen. Number 41 fellow gears, fireworks guys. And the, the, um, person behind the desk at fellow gears fireworks he has a tadpole in his head and it took me a several hours to figure out how to not aggro every single guard in the area to get this done so i used gale and i walked myself over to the um, across the street and i summoned a fire elemental <laughs> and then i walked the fire elemental all the way across the way and nobody seemed to notice that there's this fire elemental walking into a fireworks shop. And then I just had him attack the fireworks and kill everybody in the bot in the, in the lower level. That's the simplest way I found to not aggro everybody. Um, and then, however, once you, um, go and you go collect the uh, tadpole, there's a chance that somebody might see you. So make sure that you sneak around and you get the, uh, you get the tadpole from the clerk, um, as sneakily as possible. Invisibility is your friend, uh, as is uh, the case in most of these. So yeah, number 42, going to be the longest one. And uh, it's, it's, it's got the most implication. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to do the quest. I'm just going to show you how to get to the tadpole. All right. So what you're going to want to do is you go to the Gray Harbor docks, and then you go to the Water Queen's house, and you go and you watch the funeral. You speak to uh, the flood tide, Alondra Gray, and she will tell you that uh, the person that was uh, killed was um, murdered by a monster. What you have to do is you have to go all the way to the other side of the harbor and you have to break into the warehouse. There will be a bunch of wargs. You can fight them or you could go invisible. If you didn't want to fight the wargs, you could go invisible and you could go into the hatch that is underneath the crates. And then you go down underneath the, uh, underneath the warehouse there, and you're going to meet um, Red Hammer, the divisor. And he's going to ask you, um, you know, what are you doing there? And, um, you know, what do you want to do? And you tell him, take me to the Iron Throne, which is a prison. And then there, this is where uh, Will's father is being kept. And you can rescue Will's father and a bunch of other people. However, I'm not going to show you that. All we're going to do is get the tadpole. I'm going to show you where the tadpole is and how to get it. So once you, once you reach the iron throne, okay, make yourself hasted. You should have a tadpole ability to fly. Use that and use dash. Okay. That'll give you 120 feet of movement. You can get all the way down to the end and then go, go straight from the ladder, go straight. And then to the, the first junction, go to the right and then at the right, you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to probably kill that first Sawagan in the first round. And then if you can, 
flip the switch that's on the right hand side of the door that'll open the door and then the tadpole will be on the second round the tadpole will be on the desk on the right hand side there as you go through the door After that, if you have enough time, you can free a bunch of prisoners and get the heck out of Dodge. You get back on the on the submarine and, and uh, get back to the uh, docks where uh, you can go ahead and rejoin your party. Number 43, the Emperor Tadpole, the big tadpole of them all, where right before the final boss, the Emperor Illithid gives you a tadpole and says, make yourself better. We need more power. And it will allow you to evolve yourself into an Illithid if you so choose. Or you can change one of your party members into an Illithid and it unlocks all of the powers of the, of the tadpoles. You don't need any tadpoles to do this. You just take it. You turn yourself into an Illithid. You turn yourself into a Mind Flayer. And so I gave mine to Carlac because she was going to die anyway. And she turned into a, an Illithid and she's a Mind Flayer at the end of my playthrough on my live stream i live stream this entire series so if you want to go on the channel and check it out uh there was a lot of mistakes that were made but hey i had a lot of fun the 31 episodes and i went through the entire game um before i did this and went through the game again to do this video so if there are any other tadpoles that are, exist in the game that you know about let me know in the comment section down below and i will make an additional amended video so we can go ahead and add that to the channel anyway guys hopefully this helped you out hopefully you found all the tadpoles that you wanted to and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if i've earned your subscription don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications as i always say i am my usual me be your usual you and we will see you in the next one thank you so much for watching guys we'll see you later Bye bye